Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christian with PerfectStockAlert.com, a 100% free service for smart investors and traders. All we ask in return, please refer a friend. Today, we're going to be looking at the definition of net income, also known as NI, bottom line, net earnings, net profit. As I do in each one of these fundamental analysis tutorial videos, I'll give you the actual definition, then we'll go on to look at some examples. Net income is an entity's net earnings for a specific period of time. Net income is calculated by taking revenues and adjusting for all expenses. This number is found on the bottom line of a company's income statement and is an important measure of how profitable a company is over a period of time. Now let's go look at an example. The net income for any company will be found on a company's income statement. I'm looking here right now at Yahoo Finance. You can find this information anywhere, whether it be Google Finance, MSN, uh, your discount broker, uh, within the annual report of the company that you own or thinking about owning. Uh, again, it's at the bottom, uh, it's the bottom line. So, and that's, of course, in re reference uh, to the income statement. So we'll move on down here. Get out the tools right quick. All right. Now, in every case that you look at an income statement, they're going to be laid out a little bit different. Uh, it depends on where you're actually getting the income statement from. Uh, in some cases, you'll look at the situation you have here. It shows net income right here. It would be indicating this number here. However, this isn't actually accurate on Yahoo Finance because net income is after pre preferred stock dividends have been paid. And you can see in this case, they're showing net income here, and they're showing a preferred stock adjustment here, and then they're showing net income applicable to common shares below that. So this is actually the net income that we're going to be looking at. Uh, other places they won't lay it out like this. They'll just say uh, maybe net income uh, applicable to common shares. And they won't have this actual line right here. And then they'll have just an expense above that uh, showing the preferred stock or other adjustments they may have made. Okay. Just so you know that net income actually has preferred stock dividends that's already been paid out before you get the net income. Let me clean that up. Okay, net income can be uh, distributed among holders of common stock as a dividend or held by the firm as an addition to retained earnings. Many companies will do a combination of both, paying out a part of the net income in the form of a dividend and also holding the remaining portion as retained earnings, which increases shareholders' equity. Okay. Should also be noted that net income can be a positive or a negative number. In this particular case, you can see it's a positive number, therefore increasing uh, the shareholder equity. But if it were a negative number, it'd be actually drawing down the shareholder equity. So the company would be losing money and therefore shareholders would be losing money. Uh, it's important to take that into advisement. There's a great deal of uh, things that you can do as an investor uh, just looking at the net income, you can use this number to calculate all kinds of ratios as well as the earnings per share. Um, but what's most important from an investor standpoint, you want to look at the company's income statement. Uh, the more uh, time periods you have to look at comparing uh, the trend for it, the better. In this particular case, we're looking at three years of the net income, but you'd prefer if you were uh, Warren Buffett or Benjamin Graham would teach that you want at least five years uh, of data to uh, draw some kind of a conclusion. You can see here you've got $7.9 billion. Here you have $11.6 billion. Here you have $15 billion. You can see from these just a short little glimpse right here, this uh, time period, that the trend is clearly up. The company is growing the net income uh, higher with every uh, consecutive uh, year. And that's what you want to see. You, you can look at a situation and say that uh, one particular year might be down, not a loss, but just down, uh, and, but still the overall trend would be up. And that would be fine too. What you don't want to see is uh, 15 billion here and then a loss of 10 billion here and then a, a you know, a gain of 300 million here, something of that nature. That's, that's too, uh, uh, you're looking for something that's consistently profitable. So basically keep that in mind whenever you're looking. Also, keep an eye on your net income. If you're looking at a company's uh, income statement, and we've already gone over all these items, and so you should probably already know this, but if you don't, uh, you should know when you're looking at the income statement, uh, what's actually causing that net income if it's being reported as a net income. Are you seeing this because of the operating income? Uh, you have an income at that level? Uh, at this particular level here, if you were to do all the math here, you would find there'd be a positive number here. That's what you'd want to see. And then it continues on down through other expenses. Uh, let me clean that up a bit. <clears throat> Scroll on down here. You continue on down uh, and you see uh, um, uh, the tax expense, so forth and so on, and the minority interest expense. You continue on down. If you just see that positive number, uh, 
making sense, you, you, your main business produced that and you moved on down to a positive note, that'd be fine. But if you were looking at a loss on the business portion itself, the basic core of the business, and then you were seeing it become an increase or become a positive number on net income after uh, extraordinary items or non-recurring events or uh, other income or uh, you know something like that or an income tax benefit or something of that nature then they'd be more questionable so you want to look at the quality of the net income line just because it says there's a net income applicable to common share doesn't necessarily mean that the company uh, created that because it's a great company I, I've already gone over like I said in uh, several videos uh, breaking this entire income statement down for you guys so you guys already know how to do that but I just wanted to bring that up anybody who may not have already watched those videos there's a difference between uh, you know net positive net income and positive net income just because you know they both show two companies may show net income being positive doesn't necessarily mean that they're both the same uh, derived from the same uh, core business models or the same uh, strengths in their businesses. Now we're going to talk about how to actually analyze that. Now, I've already shown you you can actually analyze the trend of the net earnings or I'm sorry the net income over time. Uh, what, what I want to show you now is another little trick you can use. This is one Buffett, Warren Buffett would use a lot. He would simply take the net income and then divide that, scrolling up here, uh, by the total revenue. Let me get that again. And you divide it by the total revenue. Uh, one of the things he's found that if you get a situation where a company has less than a 10% uh, return, uh, retaining uh, less than 10% or 10% or less of their total revenue, uh, then the company is actually not a really a great company. It's in a likely a very highly competitive industry. It's not got a lot of uh, power behind it. If, on the other hand, you were to find it at, uh, say, 20% or higher, uh, you'd be looking at a very strong company, assuming that that, that trend is accurate and the company can able to maintain that that, type, that level of earnings. Uh, that, that's a that's strong company. That's what you're looking for as a long-term investor. Okay, So that's the main thing to look at. I know there's a big uh, difference between a 10% and a 20%. So that little gray area there in the middle, you can find companies that aren't necessarily uh, discovered by other investors at that point within that range there. So if you, you're looking at a company that's growing its earnings and it's able to uh, capture a large portion of the total revenue at the bottom line, uh, then you're looking at a company that is something you want to look at from a long-term perspective as an investor. One last item I'd like to note for you guys here. When you're looking at your uh, actual income statement here and the net income applicable to common shares, uh, whenever you're looking at that, a lot of analysts will not look at the income statement for the net income. Uh, they will actually look at the uh, earnings per share over a history there. The, there is a, uh, a flaw with that. Whenever you look at the per share data, it can be looking like it's growing just because the company may be buying back its own shares, basically decreasing this, the uh, number of pieces of the pie, and therefore the earnings would appear to be growing even though in some extreme cases they don't have to. They could actually take a loss, and if the company was buying back enough shares, it would look like the company was having an increase. Uh, so that's just something to think about. A lot of guys, uh, like I said, will look at earnings per share. Uh, I recommend that you look at uh, the net income and analyze it that way. You can always break it down for, uh, per share if you'd like, but uh, this is a safer way of doing that, okay? And now you know. Please take a moment to review our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinion only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of an investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit, loss, or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.